Donc, Michael, peut-être enlève ton, ton, ton micro parce que… Ah, non, non, pardon, non, non, c'est pas… C est, c est, c est, tout va bien. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this morning, we will speak about the LCPDRM with Bookin. Bookin is a French company which has integrated this uh, new DRM is in uh, its uh, e-readers uh, last year. To describe this experience, uh, I welcome Rémi Marshall, uh, Valentin Hubert, and Michael Dahn. So let me present uh, them uh, quickly. Rémi has always uh, been a book and technology enthusiast. After being uh, a bookseller for a few years, he followed a training course to become a developer. Uh, he then joined Bookin to contribute to uh, the development of uh, the reading ecosystem, e-readers, and mobile applications. Valentin, now, after, embedded, after being an embedded software engineer, uh, Valentin joined Bookin to work on the new Diva e-readers, thus uh, combining his book and electronic passions. And the session will be moderated by Michael Down. Uh, Michael is the CEO and co-founder of Bookin. Uh, Michael, uh, after an engineering degree in electronics and some research uh, in uh, molecular physics, far from the booking industry, uh, Michael is one of the pioneers of the book industry with former adventure such as Cital and now Bookin that he has founded in 2003. So before having Remy uh, and Valentin take the stage, uh, just a few words about the spread of LCP in the world. So I will just share my screen to show you an image. Okay, you should see it now. So you see on this image that um, LCP starts spreading in the world. So you see a big blob of um, LCP presence in Europe for sure in France, in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, now in England, in Norway, and in Sweden. This is the state of the affairs. Uh, Russia will uh, join uh, soon because the Russian state library uh, is uh, adopting LCP at the moment. In, the, in America, uh, we've got uh, a strong presence of LCP in Canada uh, via uh, Pre Numeric uh, Canada and the Mark and uh, a presence that starts uh, growing in the US uh, with several uh, companies and open uh, public libraries adopting LCP at this time, including the New York Public Library. In Asia, in Asia you will see that uh, China, Hong Kong, and Japan uh, now have uh, LCP implementation. In China, it's the, the Shanghai uh, Public Library. Uh, in Hong Kong, it's uh, Bookseller. Uh, and in uh, Japan, it's also a, a manga uh, bookseller. And uh, in Australia, uh, there is a company, uh, WebQM, uh, which uh, is uh, ready to, to host LCP, uh, LCP initiatives. We see LCP even in, uh, in Africa now, in Rwanda and Kenya, thanks to um, Nabu.org and Ekitabu. Uh, who are uh, developing uh, systems for uh, students in, in these countries uh, using LCP as a protection for the for the ebooks. So this was a quick uh, overview of where LCP is present. So we we'll stop the sharing and give the floor to Mikel. So hello everybody. Good morning. Um, so my name is. Uh, is Michael, uh, Michael Dan, and I'm the founder and the CEO of uh, Booking. So Booking is a French company, as, uh, as Laurent uh, told you already, and we are working in this area since uh, 2003. Um, what we are doing is that we are doing and developing a, a reading, ebook reading ecosystem. So I know this industry for a very long time, and, uh, and now we are adopting a new standard for, for DRM. And we are very happy with that because we are at Booking. We are very proud to be part of an open uh, ecosystem. And this standard is LCP. And we want to, to introduce and uh, show you how we did and how we, we, we introduce it. So very also, I show you what we do. So we do basically an ebook reader. 
and uh, also uh, mobile applications. And this is uh, uh, an ebook reader we sold, uh, which is sold in, 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 in France, but not only in France. We are also present in many countries in Europe, such as Sweden, uh, CI, Russia, and also Switzerland, Spain, etc. So please, I leave uh, the, 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 the voice, or I don't know how you say that in, in English, but I leave the, the, the speech to, uh, to uh, my uh, fellow um, um, uh, employees and, um, and uh, partners, which are Remy and, uh, uh, and uh, Valentin. So thank you, Mike Michael. Uh, first of all, um, we are doing a poll uh, that you can answer uh, to know if you already did encounter the issues with uh, eBooks DRM. So what we'll talk about today. Uh, first, uh, it will be Adobe versus uh, SCP DRMs. We are going to um, see why we choose to add um, the DRM uh, of uh, SCP alongside uh, Adobe uh, DRMs. Then we'll take the example of um, Booking uh, to see how uh, the SCP DRM uh, helped us improve our uh, user experience. And uh, finally, we'll see what is planned for the future and how it's made possible by using SCP. So an ideal world is a world of monopoly. Um, your um, uh, customers uh, are using your website, your application, your reader, everything uh, that belong to you. Um, so you have a um, great control uh, on uh, the content and uh, on the customers. And your solution is pretty easy uh, to use for your, for your consumers because they don't have choice. They just follow the rules, your rules. But the world is not ideal. Um, <clears throat> As soon, as soon as a customer wants to uh, uh, buy content from elsewhere and enjoy it on your, uh, on your ecosystem, uh, it's going to be difficult uh, for them uh, to, uh, because there is uh, not much interoperability uh, and it may cause frustration about, uh, uh, for your consumer. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to see how we can change that. So hi, everybody. Uh, at Booking, we believe that uh, user experience and interoperability are really uh, key to satisfy the user, because if they are not satisfied, they will not stay in the ebooks uh, world. So. Uh, in the last few years, we've made uh, big steps to improve that. Uh, the first big step is uh, our partnership with Ipergine. So Ipergine is also a French company that offers solution for uh, libraries to be able to sell online their own uh, books and eBooks. So uh, Book in Store is now uh, proposed by Ipergine and our e-readers and future mobile applications connect directly to Ipergin ecosystem. Uh, thanks to them, we now can distribute LCP ebooks. But another really important uh, aspect of this partnership is that uh, independent bookshops that are using uh, Ipergin to distribute ebooks can now also uh, sell Diva e-readers that will be connected directly to their own uh, system. So we can offer our e-readers to other independent bookshops and people can enjoy having the animation of their, the librarians they like in, uh, in an e-reader easily. Another uh, great step is to uh, be able to deploy an ecosystem on all major platforms. So for that, we use the Qt uh, development framework. Uh, we are currently on, uh, we have currently e-readers and we will so very soon launch Android and iOS applications. Uh, and we have a single code base for all these platforms. So this allows us to uh, deploy new features really easily. And uh, LCP is a great example of that. Since at first we uh, developed it for our e-reader, 
but uh, we will be able to include it in our mobile application as soon as they are launched. Um, so this is really a great step for us and we will now see how LCP has really helped us improve the user experience in our ecosystem. So first, what we were dealing with, um, Adobe um, is kind of a universal DRM um, because it's largely available across publishers, distributors, ebook stores, and reader manufacturers. So any supplier can include the Adobe DRM in their solution as long as they pay for it. And um, Adobe uh, DRM is also efficient uh, for content holders. Uh, it protects copyright and it, uh, it helps to maintain uh, the difficult industry of, uh, of book selling. But uh, Adobe uh, DRM also lead to a pretty annoying user experience. Uh, and um, uh, we are seeing a, a lot of, uh, of, of people not very happy uh, with, um, with the situation. So at Booking, around 90% of our, our after sales service is due to Adobe DRM. It may be caused by many reasons. Uh, first of all, um, their PC software is not uh, easy, always easy to use uh, due to a questionable um, UI. And um, so there is, um, um, for the, uh, the customer, no way to know how many devices have been authorized. So sometimes I just want to uh, add another device, but they just can't. And there is a loophole to reauthorize. Um, finding the way to do so on their website is pretty difficult. And finally, but we will see this again later, uh, the license is separated from the file and it it, it may cause confusion for, for the customer. So uh, as soon as a customer wants to use uh, multiple devices to read the same book and do, or download a book from another bookstore, you will have 100% 100 chances to get a call. Um, LCP uh, uh, is a bit different. It, it was created with interoperability in mind. So the main principles of SCP are uh, very simple. Uh, everyone should have the same user experience on every platform. Uh, uh, everyone should have the same user experience for buying and lending a book. Uh, you shouldn't have to use uh, extra software to be able to um, uh, decrypt your, your file and be able to, to read it. And uh, in opposition to Adobe, which is uh, account-based, uh, LCP is pay thread based, so it's much easier to, to share a book and to share your uh, passphrase, so uh, more people will be able to, to, to read them. Uh, the, the goal uh, of, uh, of LCP uh, is that a DRM should never prevent you to read a book you bought, and um, <clears> the <throat> DRM should be almost invisible for the end user. So let's take an example. Let's imagine someone that had to stay home for a long time because of a virus. Of course, this is pure fiction and they want to start to read the digital books. So if they try with the LCP protected uh, file, they just have to download the EPUB file, copy it to the reader, enter an LCP key, and it's that simple, they can start reading. But if they try to do so with a book protected by Adobe DRM, the way is a little bit more difficult. First, they will download an ACSM file, and for a lot of people, the extension of a file, they don't know what it is. So they will just try to copy the ACSM file on their reader, and the reader won't even see it was added. So uh, then you have to find your ID and it can be pretty difficult sometimes because you have to know if you have a vendor ID or 
an Adobe ID. So uh, if, even for someone who is an expert, it's sometimes difficult to know which is which one is your ID. Then you have to install and configure uh, Adobe Digital Editions. And if you are on Linux, you just won't be able to do that because it just doesn't exist for Linux. Uh, you then have to open the ACSM with Adobe Digital Edition to be able to copy the book to your reader and finally start reading. So what we're seeing here it's, there is multiple points um, during the whole operation that can go bad, go bad uh, and, um, and lead the, the consumer to go back to physical books only. And what we can say is a better DRM is better for business because 20% of uh, consumers that are illegally uh, today downloading uh, ebooks uh, say they do so uh, because of uh, DRM that preventing them to uh, use their book on uh, multiple uh, uh, devices and to save uh, their file uh, to be able to read them for later. So now I will let uh, Valentin take over uh, to uh, explain what we are doing at Booking to uh, implement uh, LCP in our solution and what is planned for the future. So having a, a really easy to use and easy to share DRM is really paramount. Uh, a French survey, survey showed recently that 46% uh, of uh, digital readers uh, are sharing ebooks with other people, with their friends, with their family. So we have two goals. Uh, first, it must be easy to use when you want to read. So if you stay in booking ecosystem, it just must work without uh, questions about uh, account or stuff like that. The user doesn't have to know there is a DRM. They should also be able to go from our ecosystem to other reading devices. And it should be easy to share, uh, to share eBooks with people uh, you want to, to send them to. So let's see in Booking ecosystem how it is working. So just a reminder, the main goal is the user doesn't need to know there is LCP when he stays with us. So first step with all online uh, platforms, the user creates an account. Uh, when he does that, we generate a random LCP key on the server side. Uh, we don't ask him a passphrase because he may not know what uh, is LCP and he might not uh, even use it uh, if he buys, uh, for example, uh, watermarked ebooks. So we just generate one for him and it will, it will be ready in case he needs it. So next, he logs onto a device, for instance, a new reader or a mobile application. And then the key hash is sent to the device. This is this key hash that is used to open an ebook generated uh, by Booking Store with LCP. So next, when the user uh, when he buys an ebook on a Booking Store, uh, he can he downloads it, opens it, and well, it just works. He doesn't have to enter a key. He doesn't have to do anything. It just opens. So this is really invisible for the user. And uh, well, the user is happy because he can read his book without having to do anything else. So in our ecosystem, it works great. But the question now is, is it really easy to use uh, with other, other providers on other devices? So uh, Remy also uh, already uh, spoke about that, but LCP is really designed with interoperability in mind. So it's pretty straightforward. If you want to open uh, eBooks you bought on Booking Store on other devices. So let's imagine you don't know what's LCP. You just want to read your book. So you uh, download it, you copy it on uh, LCP certified reader, desktop app, whatever. You try to open it, and then you get uh, you get a pop-in asking for your passphrase with a, a hint that says, uh, "What is your LCP key on your Booking Store account?" So if you don't know what that 
you go to your booking store account and on top of the of the website in your account you see your rcp key so you just have to display it type it on the system and that's it you can read your books on another device uh, we also allow the user to change its key if he wants to for instance if he wants to use a more secure key or a, a simpler to remember to be able to share it with uh, other people so this is um, this is quite easy thanks to lcp uh, mainly and also uh, if he wants to read uh, is an, an ebook from another provider let's say he borrowed an ebook uh, in a public library downloads it he, uh, then you copy it to uh, the device, the Diva e-reader, and you'll get the, the pop-in uh, asking for a password. Uh, so there will be a hint saying, for I don't know, maybe your uh, library ID, you type it, you can read it. So it's really easy to go from a booking ecosystem to another ecosystem. There are no barriers between the two. Um, and so even if you don't have a LCP a compatible e-reader, well, it's not a problem. Uh, LCP is now available on almost uh, on all uh, major platforms. So if you are on a desktop, you can use Thorium Reader. Uh, there is a great talk uh, about that by Daniel Weck. Uh, you can, uh, if you are on a mobile phone or tablet, uh, soon there will be booking apps and there are other applications certified LCP and e-reader, there are a few e-readers, uh, including Booking uh, Diva. So it's really easy. You download your book, copy it to your platform, enter your key, and you can just start reading. So currently, uh, LCP is really a great step to improving user experience and uh, interoperability. But we still believe that uh, we can do more things with uh, LCP thanks to LCP flexibility. Uh, the first idea we have is to uh, implement uh, synchronization with public libraries on our devices. So instead of I, I want to read an ebook from my public library on my book in Diva. Currently, if there is LCP uh, in the public library system, I go on my computer, download the book, copy it to the e-reader. I need to enter my passphrase. I already know it or I look on the website and then I can read. So it's already pretty easy, much easier than with Adobe DRM, but it's still not, uh, not instantaneous. So what we'd like to add uh, is a synchronization directly in the device. So in the future, you may just go to the public library portal, borrow a book, press synchronize on the e-reader, and you will see your, uh, your e-book borrowed for maybe a month and you can read it. And also with the Ash of the key that is shared, so you don't even need to know your, uh, your passphrase. Another great use case we'd like to simplify is uh, sharing ebooks between users. Because currently with LCP, you can already do that. Let's say I want to send an ebook uh, I loved to Remy. So I go to the website or on my e reader, I copy the book, I send it by email to Remy. Uh, I need also to look my passphrase or to give it to him so he can open it. Then Remy uh, downloads the book from the email, copy it on its e-reader and then open it. So it's much better than with Adobe because with Adobe it was almost impossible, but there are still uh, lots of steps and we like to make it really easy like uh, sharing uh, on a phone you just press share send and that's it so it's only a concept but we'd like to have something like that you uh, press a share button on the e-reader you type the email of the person you want to send it to like remy at booking.com you press share then remy uh, gets an email saying hey 
if it has a booking account, hey, you have a, a, someone shared a book with you, you can find it in your booking account or on your e-reader. Remy can then go on its e-reader, synchronize and open the book. And that's it because we already shared the, the hash, the file is ready to access with its account. So it's a reason, reasonable use because it's just an extension of what LCP can already do, but it's really nice for the user. Um, and we could also add some warnings for the user. For instance, uh, when a file has been shared uh, already five times, we can add the pop-in saying, uh, be careful if you share your file with too much users, it might be uh, blocked by the provider. And an even better uh, solution would be to have something like that, but across ecosystems, but that may be something for, for later. So if you have other ideas of uh, new use cases uh, that LCP could, uh, could uh, enable, uh, let us know, we, uh, we'll always, we are always interested. So as a conclusion, LCP is a brand new technology and uh, we need to push it forward to create a great user experience. It's starting to be uh, used in many countries and that's really great, but we need to continue so that people can use it uh, like, like uh, everywhere. So this was unable to create a diverse ecosystem, but that will remain simple for the end customer. Then people will be happy to have eBooks. They won't be afraid that they might uh, not uh, be able to share with other people, that they might not be able to read it in the future. They'll just be confident in the eBook ecosystem. And LCP, thanks to its flexibility, might allow the development of new, UK, new use cases to meet end user expectations. <laughs> so thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, to share with us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the last slide. It's more yellow, but which is uh, to, be, uh, to be in the loop. But um, so we will take the question. I will let uh, Michael handle the questions. Uh, before that, I would like just to add um, uh, some uh, some precisions on, on some aspects. So the first one is uh, the different axes of development of the labs. Because why why is the lab uh, so involved in LCP? So the the reason is that uh, we are a nonprofit uh, association. Uh, well, for the development of the uh, ebook uh, industry. And uh, these different axes of development are totally interlinked, in fact. So we are dealing with Radium, open source software for reading application. We are uh, developing Torium Reader, a free end user desktop application. And we are doing that because there was no great solution on Windows and Linux before, especially ending LCP. Um, we are working on standards for EPUB3, web publications, audiobooks, so moving uh, forward with standards because uh, reading applications need standards. We are working on accessibility because reading application must be accessible, and we are uh, working on LCP because uh, no thing, no no open distribution of ebooks can happen if there is no user friendly rights management solution. So everything goes together, and uh, Ideal Lab members understand the the importance of working on these uh, different aspects in parallel. And this is uh, difficult for a small team to have all these working in parallel. But uh, for example, Fondation LIA in Italy is helping us uh, and helping accessibility and content protection moving hand in hand in Italy with the, the companies they know, like uh, uh, Media Library Online, uh, Casalini Libri, and, and other companies in Italy which adopt uh, LCP and adopt adopt at the same time accessibility practices, radium and standards and more standards. So everything goes together and LCP must move along uh, with, the, with the rest. Uh, you you talked, uh, Valentin and me, about avoiding entering the passphrase. So this, uh, this feature uh, is uh, an add-on on LCP that uh, the LCP working group at IDEA Lab has specified last year. I will just share uh, my screen to show you 
the hyperlink. Where is it there? Google Chrome. It should be this one. Okay, uh, so it's uh, on uh, radium.org, uh, LCP specs. And uh, when you find it, you find the automatic key retrieval add-on, uh, which is a proposal at, at, this, at this moment. So people can uh, implement it in a different fashion. The, the issue, the, the, the goal is to make so that somebody who is authenticated on a certain uh, uh, website uh, can get automatically and secretly his uh, key uh, without entering his, pa in his, his passphrase because he is already authenticated by the web server. So the web server knows him, the web server can give him uh, temporarily the, the proper uh, key to open the, the books. So this is something that people can uh, uh, implement or not, and Booking has implemented something like this. The other thing that I would like to share quickly is, uh, so this is another, another uh, part of my screen, voila. Okay, uh, it is interesting to know that uh, LCP itself is becoming an international standard. Uh, LCP will soon be an ISO technical specification. It will be that this fall. So the review and vote of international experts has been positive. And Taeyun Kim from DRM Inside in Korea and I are now just finalizing this document, uh, which uh, will be uh, online by, uh, we think, uh, the end of September and uh, is, uh, is um, an expression of the LCP specification with the ISO language, an ISO uh, way of expressing uh, things. But uh, it's, it's really LCP, which is, uh, which is there with an introduction and, uh, and all the bells and whistles that the ISO is, uh, is expecting from a spec. So uh, there also, that, that was all I wanted to say. And now I give the floor back to Michael for the Q&A. Yes. Um, thank you, Laurent, for, uh, for this, uh, this, uh, this uh, additional information about LCP. It's, it's great that uh, you will be ISO, and uh, I strongly believe that uh, LCP will be the next uh, big step in the ebook industry. So this is why we, we invest and we, we spend um, uh, a lot of efforts and, uh, and energy in this, uh, in this, um, in this standard. Congratulations for all your work, uh, Laurent. So please, uh, I, I am here for, to handle your questions and um, please go on. Is there any questions about uh, LCP and uh, how we handle this DRM? So I will uh, voice the questions. In, in, okay, I got it. Question, with LCP, apart from the password, is the file otherwise protected? So this one is easy. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, with LCP, apart from the password, is the file otherwise protected? So, uh, well, it's protected because it's encrypted uh, first. And uh, therefore, uh, yes, it is, it, is, it, is, it is totally protected. Only the owner of the passphrase can open the book. This is yeah, I, I want just here to uh, pinpoint something about um, uh, license file and the uh, EPUB file. Um, so there is a, a possibility in, uh, and, uh, with LCP, and uh, you tell me, Laurent, uh, if I'm wrong, is that the, the license file could be differentiated from the, from the EPUB file, from the, the ebook file. That's right. And, uh, that's right. And uh, we promote at Booking, so we have our own... Um, our own uh, idea here is to have the license file directly into the EPUB file. So it means that basically you can, uh, you can uh, transfer very easily your eBooks uh, without uh, going back into the, the ACSM uh, issue, which is basically that you handle a license file. You don't have really the, the book. Uh, and what we promote is to have a, a unique file, which contains both the, both the license and the, the content itself. Um, this is uh, 
what we promote at Booking. This is how we will distribute our files with uh, with our partner Ibagine. So which which will be uh, we think something which go into the user experience, um, having a good user experience. So I have no doubt about what you handle in your hands and that you can open it where, wherever you use it. Um, so uh, we, 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 I just want to, to add this. And so right now, I hope, I expect that everybody will follow this uh, like that. There won't be any extra file which will be handled and uh, how we can handle it, at least for commercial purpose. I mean, when you, you buy a book. And so we, we totally agree with this approach, meaning that when people exchange files, it should be EPUB files. Or uh, if a PDF is protected by, uh, by LCP, it should be the, the container of the PDF as we have uh, specified it. Uh, but uh, the LCPL, the small file, which is equivalent to a CSM, should only be exchanged when the user doesn't see it. For example, if uh, from the reading application or from the e-reader, uh, there is a direct link to something that magically downloads the book and opens it automatically, then it can be the license that comes first and the content that comes next because the user doesn't see it. But yes, when there is an export import of a file, the file should be an EPUB. Totally agree. Okay. Good. Questions. Uh, uh, where do I see uh, maybe? Uh, you can see the questions in the live discussion on, uh, on uh, Swapcard, but I can voice them. Is there a limit okay. or you need to know how many devices and users can use the same account for a single book? So as we say, this is not an account. Uh, it's, a, it's a file which can be uh, uh, used. The question is how many times you can open a file uh, on the different devices. So, uh, so I can... So, Right now, there is a there is a, 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 a control which uh, which can be either automatic or which can be given to the publisher, and this is a, a new thing that we we propose also with uh, with Zipagin. Is basically you can see how many times the file has been opened, and you can fix a limit to that. So let's say it's at the discretion. I don't know if it's an English phrase, an English expression, but let's say it's the the choice is left to the publisher. Uh, right now, there is no uh, rules. Some people say uh, a few tens times, others say a few times. Uh, right now, there is not any strict rules about that, but uh, there is um, something around 10 right now, which is, which is shared among uh, publishers. The, the next question is, uh, is a very... Uh, interesting one. What is the feedback from uh, publishers about LCP? This is a, a very this is a very good question. And um, so right now, um, the feedback. First of all, uh, maybe uh, Laurent, you agree with me. Publishers are part of the EDR Lab. Uh, um, uh, I don't know, say that uh, bureau or, or uh, police bureau of, uh, of... <laughs> the board of directors. <laughs> the board of directors of, uh, of the DR Lab. So the publishers are part of it and, and, and very large publishers, at least French ones, such as um, Editis or, or, or Gallimard. So right now the feedback, so we are in discussion with publishers. We have, a, by the way, we have a, a good news is that uh, the first uh, large publishers uh, in France have agreed uh, to, uh, to distribute their content with LCP on a ePagin platform, and it will be announced uh, very, uh, very soon. And um, so right now, uh, all the publishers agree to uh, distribute uh, with LCP. Uh, they are pretty confident. There has been a, a, a tremendous work of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of advertising done by, uh, by EDR Lab uh, towards the publishers to explain them what is the advantages of LCP, now how strong it's, uh, and, it is as strong as right now the other DRM, main DRM, which is Adobe. Um, so right now, the, 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 the answer of the publishers are very positive, and we should have uh, in, in the coming weeks uh, a lot of books coming into LCP. I want also to, to, to also pinpoint the fact that it's already available for uh, uh, comics, for example. Uh, if you go uh, one time again on uh, 
ePagin um, uh, or Booking Store website and you, you buy some comics from, uh, from a Media Diffusion, uh, which are distributed by Media Diffusion, they are using LCP. So uh, it's growing. Um, we know about this because we, we were among the first to support Adobe a long time ago. It was in 2008, I think, or 2009. And we were among the first and we saw Adobe growing and, uh, and adopted by many, many publishers. Um, so right now we are very confident that it will be adopted by, 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 uh, by everyone. I will just add that, uh, so Michael is, uh, is speaking about the French publishers, but they are not only French because Hachette is uh, global, as you know. Uh, but uh, at the moment, what we are uh, waiting for is uh, really positive uh, feedback from the US publishers. Uh, and uh, at this moment, it's a bit, uh, well, silent uh, for, for that. So the, uh, the development of LCP in the US and, uh, will, will help a lot on that. Ned Galley, uh, so Firebrand, uh, the New York Public uh, Library and all the Simply ecosystem adopting LCP will be the good moment for uh, US publishers to, to say, uh, let's go. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, there is a big difference between European publishers uh, who are totally open today and positive, explicitly positive, and uh, US uh, publishers who are silent. That's it. Uh, I would like just to, to come back to uh, Michael, Michaelis' uh, question about the limit of many devices. Uh, just to say that, in fact, LCP doesn't block a number of devices because it's totally stupid. Uh, this limit to five or six devices for the lifetime of a, of a book. Uh, people change their uh, reading application on their smartphone each uh, 18 months. And so the, the LCP uh, way of thinking is to say that let's limit oversharing. So there is uh, control of the number of devices which open a license. And if this number goes out of some limits, but it's not six for the lifetime um, of a book, it can be six per year, it can be whatever the publisher and distributor decide. Uh, then we consider that there is oversharing. And if there is oversharing, then we can revoke the license. So it's a post control not the pre-control, which is uh, really, for us, smarter. Uh, do you want to add something, Michael, on that? No, it's, uh, we, we completely agree. It's basically, we, 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 we propose uh, to the publishers the, uh, the possibility to settle uh, the rules of usage of their files. And uh, if they decide that it's uh, 10 per year or uh, 100 in a lifetime, they do it by themselves. Or if they say, if we, if we see, for example, uh, activation every day, uh, we have a problem. So this is the kind of alert that we can bring on a, on a special um, interface that we bring to the publishers, and then they can act accordingly and say, as you said, it's, it's a post control. Uh, you can see uh, the usage of the file. And so the, the next question from Yub is, if I send an LCP protected ebook together with the password to someone else, can he read it? So the answer is yes, but with the limit that if you put this uh, protected ebook plus the passphrase, for example, on the web, all you can eat, free to use, the, in, in, the, in the hour, uh, the server will detect that there are many uh, devices, different devices openis, opening this ebook, and it will be revoked. And so this answers also to another question can I expire an ebook or withdraw authorization? Uh, from a user? The answer is yes, you can revoke yes. a license and nobody in this case can read this book with this license. So the, the, the user, if there is an error, something that went wrong, has just to uh, call the support. And this is the only case he would call the support, in fact, uh, if, if really there was a, a wrong oversharing, which, well, needs to be defined. Um, but uh, in other case, everything goes uh, smoothly. Uh, Michael, do you want to? Yeah, I think also we have a um, uh, we 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 think about at at Booking to uh, to tell to the customers. Uh, we want to find a way to tell to the customers how many times the book has been shared. Also, I think this is something. Uh, it's a bit like you're on the Netflix account and you know that you have uh, uh, five uh, five um, uh, accounts which are open currently, 
and right now we want this is uh, uh, the kind of information we want to share with the customer. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's uh, it's it's a kind of a fair use also, and it's also something which is uh, which can prevent the customer to do uh, uh, not bad things, uh, but uh, stupid things, uh, such as oversharing their books, so they can see it and so they know that uh, there is a limitation here, that there could be a limitation here. And uh, Luisa Gagini is asking more information about the, the authenticated server mechanism, which is the, the, this automatic uh, uh, passphrase uh, retrieval. So here, yeah, this is very technique. So Luisa, I, I really think that uh, it would be better to, to discuss face-to-face uh, -face, to, to have a call specific on that. The, the specification is online about that. So this is, well, this is, the, the, the concept is very simple. Uh, somebody has an LCP reading application, which is compliant with this add-in first. This somebody or this application allows the user to authenticate himself through a service like Booking. Second uh, hypothesis. So there is a, uh, the, there is a, uh, communication, I would say, between the, this specific reading application and this specific server. Then the uh, user authenticates himself through the service. The server knows who is this guy. The server knows who, uh, what is the passphrase. So the server can send with a protocol uh, the, the, the uh, hash of the passphrase because the passphrase is, uh, is something uh, personal. Uh, it could be something uh, which is uh, personal data. So we don't want to, to store it, but we, we just store a hash of it. And this hash can go to this specific device at this specific time, just as if the user had, has entered the passphrase. Um, is, it ex is it what we are, you have implemented? Uh, yes, we expect. <laughs> we expect <laughs> to have done that because if we didn't, I think you should have told us uh, during the the certification process. So yes, yeah, we no, did that. This is really something like that. When the customer logs in, in the answer of the login, when we check that it's uh, it's him, we send the hash of the of the key, which is uh, then added to the list of hashes on the device. And then when he tries to open a book from Booking Store, as downloaded on the reader or copied, well, it uh, tries with this hash and it works. So yeah, that, that's the same idea. And uh, as you explained uh, very clearly. Uh, the, the, the same license can be open in an e-reader outside of this add-in feature because in such a case, the user will be requested his passphrase, that's it. So the, yeah. the standard uh, behavior will be, will be the, the, the fallback, in fact. And there is a new question from Yub. Uh, do you need to be online when entering the passphrase? Uh, so the answer is no. <laughs> uh, this is a local uh, check. And uh, what happens when you are offline after lending an ebook? Does the ebook stay on your device indefinitely? So I let you answer, Michael or Valentin. When uh, when you say lending, you talk about uh, borrowing from a book public library, or it's lending uh, between people. What uh, no, what I is the... lending uh, from a library? From a library. Uh, from this, I will uh, maybe late, but I think it's there is a, a kind of chronodegradability. I, I love this yeah, word. Exactly. So please, so Valentin. Uh, yeah. So uh, the device, uh, when it is uh, LCP certified, it needs to check that uh, the license is still valid. And if it is expired, it will, uh, it will uh, block it. Yeah. So, and, and so even they... offline, it will not work. Uh, you exactly. won't be able to open it anymore. Yes, after the time limit, uh, the the file is dead. In fact, so uh, the the exact behavior does the reading application uh, deletes the file from the local catalog or not is uh, reading app dependent. Some prefer the user still having a clue of what was there, like a uh, history. So the book stays in the reading app but cannot be open anymore. Others say that okay, now that uh, the book cannot be read anymore. Let's flush the file and automatically delete the file from the local bookshelf. It's, it's up to the reading app developer. Okay, um, looking at if there are other questions. Um, 
somebody asked what means LCP. So, uh, so the, the, the fun thing is that initially uh, the, the naming was uh, lightweight content protection to oppose it to the hard DRMs like the Adobe DRM that uh, uh, constrain the number of devices, uh, uh, a, a, um, uh, require an authentication through uh, the Adobe uh, solution, etc. But lightweight is uh, can be in, in, interpreted in a bad way by some people. <laughs> exactly. So, so. so it was renamed licensed content for the protection that doesn't mean anything but uh, it enabled uh, keeping keeping the acronym so we just uh, say lcp that's it uh, i think that's uh, all yeah so just a quick feedback from the poll so on five votes a hundred percent of people said that they uncontrolled issues with adobe DRM. so it's a kind of uh, what we said that uh, Adobe DRM can be really complicated and frustrating for, for users. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's, uh, it's only five votes, but I, I uh, from, uh, from other providers, so you, from Vivlio, so uh, yeah. uh, we know that uh, they have uh, uh, stacked the, the issues. Uh, people uh, have encountered with uh, other older DRMs. And uh, well, they, they are very happy with uh, what happens with LCP. Know also that in France, uh, LCP is currently deployed on all the public libraries, uh, what we call PNB, Prenumeric uh, en Bibliothèque, so uh, e-lending in uh, e-lending, uh, the, the French e-lending solution. Uh, so the deployment is uh, is moving on at the moment, uh, which is fairly complex because it involves uh, well, uh, for sure, the publisher, the e-distributors. Uh, the Dilicom uh, hub, so there is a mechanism in the middle, and all the uh, e-lending solutions in in the libraries themselves. Uh, so everything must be updated, upgraded. Uh, so this is almost done now, and LCP protected ebooks. Uh, and I was uh, forgetting the reading apps. And so uh, so now LCP is. Uh, is on on many public libraries in France and it will go on in the coming uh, months. Okay, so thank you very much for all this. We are good. And uh, okay, we, we've gone through all the questions, I guess. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, Valentin, Rémi. Thank you. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you, Laurent. And uh, this afternoon for the audience, we will have a last session of the Digital D Publishing Summit. It's quite long, two weeks uh, event uh, about uh, accessible audiobooks by uh, Farah Little and Danny Faris from Canada, who will talk about uh, what means for an audiobook to be accessible, which is not uh, evident, and uh, what the new audiobook standard uh, promoted by the W3C can bring forward for, for that. Thank you.